Welcome to Sports BKC, the Kansas City Stars daily sports podcast. It's Wednesday, March 4th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. We cover two topics today. First, college basketball. Did you know that the NCAA men's college basketball program with the greatest winning percentage over the past four years is in Missouri? In those four years, Northwest Missouri State has collected two NCAA Division II championships, and if you add up the W's and the L's over those years, the Bearcats' 95.5% winning rate is the best in men's college basketball for all divisions. You'll hear from Northwest coach Ben McCollum, who breaks down his team on the eve of the MIAA tournament at Municipal Auditorium. I think you'll enjoy hearing what drives this 38-year-old coach. After a break, you'll hear from two football players, a future pro and a pro. The future pro is someone we've talked a lot about over the past few podcasts. Isaiah Simmons, the Clemson linebacker from Olathe North, who figures to be a top 10 selection in the NFL draft in April. Simmons was asked at the NFL Combine last week about patterning his game, and one of the players he mentioned was Chief Safety Teran Matthew. We're hearing more and more of that from NFL prospects, that Matthew is something of a role model because of how he plays. So Matthew was asked about that last Saturday at the Committee of 101 Awards Banquet in Kansas City. He had some interesting thoughts on the subject. But first, here's Northwest Missouri State coach Ben McCollum on the Bearcats and his career. Is it just a matter of now of making sure the focus is right going into the most important part of the season? Yeah, I think it's a lot of it's just handling success and, and your ability to do that. Um, and we've done a very good job of it. It can always be better. I think with us trying to get ourselves to that high level every game, especially the level that we're going we're gonna to go against, you know, just um, with being ranked so high, highly and having – um, you know, a lot of success, you're going to you're gonna take some serious shots. But with that, you have to understand that you need to get yourself to that extremely high level every single game. And those couple games, you know, just we weren't quite at the level we needed to be. Um, we are at a high level, but not high enough. And uh, we need to make sure we understand that going into postseason. Has, has that been, um, has that happened to previous teams? Is this something that you've had to deal with in late February previous years? Uh, last year it did. Uh, last year we had a game where we won by, I think, two points, and the team had a three-pointer at the buzzer to win it. Uh, they missed it. And so uh, we've had this happen before. Uh, you know, a lot of it is it wakes you up. I mean, even the first round of the conference tournament last year, I think we beat Emporia State by two or three, something like that, um, high-scoring game. And then we played really well the next two games. It it happens, but you know the other part of that is the other team's trying to win too, and so that's that's where I think with the success that we've had, um, you you not you generally, but generally speaking, people forget that you know the other team's trying to win too. Well, and, and uh, going through the season with a zero or a one by the dash is is pretty remarkable, no matter how it occurs, mm-hmm. and you guys have done that and. Um, I was trying to uh, something I'll look up here before I write the story is um, the, the stretch that that you're on. I, I don't off the top of my head. I just don't know if it's equaled in Division Two. You know, for for the extent of period. Uh, yeah. That, that you guys. Are I doing. don't. I don't know that it has been either. I think maybe a West Liberty was close at one point, but they're in a completely different league. I know Colin looked it up at one point. Um, I would have to check to see, but yeah, I mean it's it's an unheard of run. Um, I mean to you know for two seasons we've lost one game for four seasons we've lost six games. So we've lost six games in four years. That, that's UCLA of the late '60s, early '70s kind of stuff. Yeah, know? I mean it's it's absolutely unheard of. Um, to do what we've done. I would guess that probably no one has lost fewer games than us in a, in a four year span. But part of that is, is um, some of the teams may play more games. So then they'll, they'll accumulate a few more wins, but they'll lose more games in the process. So um, yeah, it's, it's been an impressive run um, so far. So you get, you get asked this a lot. I think I've asked you about it before is what, what, what keeps you motivated? What, what keeps you, you know, in a position to where you, you know, 
this is important. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, I think two things. I think first off, the, the process piece is I'm a big process guy, so we don't focus so much on our results. You know, at the end of the season, obviously, we'll celebrate them, but we want to improve as much as we can possibly improve. And, and part of that is, goes back to my original reason for getting into coaching is I want to make a difference on kids once they leave Northwest Missouri State. And so, yeah, you know, we'd love to win games while you're here. That's fun. But teaching you how to get yourself to a high level every single day, how to handle adversity, handle, handle success, how to be a good teammate, how to be unselfish, all that is going to help you with your life after you leave here. So our attention is always on that specific piece. And so naturally, you're, that's always, that's ever changing. That's daily. Um, and so you're going to have that motivation pretty consistently. The other part is, I always go back to my first couple of seasons when we were 12 and 15 and 10 and 16. And I make sure that I remind myself that I'm still that coach. And I think too often when you have success and people tell you how good you are, you start to think that you're better than, you know, reality. And, and you forget that uh, a lot of that's accumulation of a lot of people, uh, a lot of players, a lot of assistants, a lot of managers, a lot of administrators, um, just a lot of people surrounding that program. And that's why you're, you're fortunate enough to have that success. But I think once you, once you, get over yourself a little bit and kind of understand who you are that allows you to kind of reflect back on those 10 and 16 years and, and, and know I'm still that hungry guy that, um, you know, was about to lose his job and et cetera, et cetera. And so I always go back to that and make sure that I, I keep things in perspective. It, it didn't discourage you after a couple of those seasons. You oh, it discouraged me. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. There's a point where I about quit. So, um, it was after one game I about quit. So it was, uh, but then after that, it, it kind of turned and I figured out the reasons uh, as to why we weren't having success. And a lot of it was self-inflicted by me. Um, and then we started to have success and started to be a little bit better. In what way? How, did, how was it? Um, I, I, I did a poor job of understanding my impact of, of my personal emotions throughout a game on the team. And... Uh, I, I, you know, it was one game in particular where I was real frustrated and my team was playing frustrated and I couldn't understand why. <laughs> well, because you're frustrated. And so I, I kind of realized the impact of, of my energy and uh, started to change my energy and my uh, perspective during games. Um, and I know I've asked you about this before. Um, you have, uh, the record alone suggests that a coach like you would move on Mm -hmm. at some point. Um, you haven't. Mm -hmm. What is it about this place that, that, that has great appeal to you? Well, I, I've always been a, a kind of an extreme loyalist and then I, I'm not I'm, I'm not a grass is always greener guy. I, I, I like the grass that I have. And so, um, you know, when you're always looking outside and looking for the next thing, I think too often you forget uh, about what you have in front of you. Now, you know, if, 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 you know, uh, and I always tell recruits this, if a, if a high major calls you tomorrow, you know, um, and, and, you know, Northwest is recruiting you and Mizzou is recruiting you, you know, you probably sh should go to Mizzou. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, but if it's a, if it's a lower level, then, you know, you probably should come here because you got a chance to, to win. And, you know, a lot of times we're able to, to beat a lot of those teams. And, um, you know, I feel like, uh, you're going to have great teammates and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, most of it is just I, 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 I like what I have here, so it would take something um, that, you know, that obviously is the same concept for a recruit. You know, I tell recruits all the time, if you're going to go low major or you're going to come to Northwest Missouri State, you need to come to Northwest Missouri State. So then if you go and then do exactly the, uh, the opposite of what you're telling kids, you're a hypocrite. And so um, I think our level's better than – than most um, of those low major leagues. Does that put your, um, uh, so do you find yourself recruiting with, against some you know, low majors? And... Um, sometimes, um, but not always. I think a lot of the kid. we have one kid on our roster, 
one kid on our roster that had Division One offers. Other than that, they all were Division Two offers. Of the probably five starters, I would say that you know four out of five, or even five out of five, or um, you know some could play as high as high major, um, and then you know some are mid and whatnot. So we have Division One talent that was overlooked for a variety of reasons. Um, a lot of that goes back to I was with David Moe and at Emporia State, and he was big on trusting your own evaluations, kind of trust your eyes. And so we've always done a good job of, of trusting our own eyes, not trusting somebody else's evaluations, trusting Twitter, trusting social media rankings. We just trust what we see. And then um, we see value in kids, and then we just bring out the value that they already have, even more so than they've brought out in the past. And at this point, uh, because of the success, that, that now becomes a recruiting factor that you know, may not have ex- existed 10 years ago. I mean, you, you can sell banners and nets and uh, trophies. Yeah, you can do it. It helps you and it hurts you. It helps you because you do get the right kids that want to come in and compete. Um, but it hurts you because a lot of kids don't want to come in and compete. You know, they don't want to fight for their spot. And so you'll get a lot of the, well, look at what they have at this position and that position and this position. They've got talent here. Yeah, we do. So come beat them out. If you beat them out, that means you're that much better. In today's day and age, a lot of kids don't want to do that. They want that guarantee. They want to feel good. They don't want that pain for a year where they got to earn their spot. Um, and the kids that we have aren't afraid of competition. They aren't afraid of... Um, you know, having to wait their turn sometimes um, because they understand the importance of, of winning rather than individual success. That's interesting. I, I, I might have thought about that at, at, a, at a high level of recruit, but I would think if you're not at that high level, you would have a hunger to want to be, you know, or at least to prove that you belong yeah. at that high level. But you're saying it, it exists on all levels. Yeah, I think it might even be worse at our level. Really? Yeah, because, you know, when you go into Division two, you want to play in their mind. Yeah. Um, they don't understand the other perspective that you'd probably be better off going to, the, uh, you know, some low majors because you'd probably have a better opportunity to play um, than you would here. And so... Uh, you're gonna have to compete here. You're not gonna get. You, I've, if I got five guys that I that 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 we think deserve to play, we're gonna play five. If I've got ten, I'm gonna play ten. You know, it, it changes based on on what it is. But I don't just play eight to ten guys regardless of what kind of talent I have. So you're gonna have to earn your way through and earn your way on that floor. So tell me about this team and what, how it's how it's similar. It's, the numbers suggest there's a lot of similarities to previous teams, but. I remember last year's group, um, and um, what's different about this year's group? Uh, I think at their highest, they're probably better um, defensively. Uh, I get there at their highest peak level when they're totally engaged. They're defensively probably slightly better. I think the the big thing with this group is making sure that they understand why they're having success consistently. When you have a lot of success. It's not that your your bellies are full necessarily. It's it's more that you forget what got you that success. It's really easy to feel good about the praise that you get, and so then you forget like, okay, well, this is why we're good, and and always going back to that why is something that this team um, needs to make sure they continue to do. But that would be the difference. Last year's team was naturally felt slighted in a lot of ways Um, because they weren't supposed to be good. And so this year's team was supposed to be good, and so you're fighting a different dynamic. They seem to have fought it well. I mean, they had to slip up early. Yep. um, Which was a a little back, and you hate to pick out a game out of, you know, the the 28 that you played, but Uh kind of shake your head at that outcome, Central Missouri. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, it was just one of those games. It was the perfect storm. I thought Central played fantastic, and... I thought we played about as bad as we could possibly play. And, you know, then coupled with the fact that we weren't making shots and uh, just the perfect storm and they beat us. And something, a coachable moment? Um, yeah, uh, to a level. You know, I think the the big thing is, is why did we get beat and understanding that piece and um, then adjusting to it. Um, but, 
part of it is too is like you don't want to just go in and just browbeat everybody like you know they won 40 some games in a row and so it's pretty impressive and you have to make sure that you celebrate some of that stuff as well well exactly i mean and you've and you certainly have there, there is an importance in acknowledging the success uh-huh. um and you know i give, making them feel like there is there's a reward for the you know for the work that you put in and um and, and that's happened right i mean you get um um when, when you clinch the miaa uh-huh. uh you'll have a senior night coming up yeah and those you've t- those things have taken care of themselves haven't they yeah no we do you, you know you cut down nets and they get a lot of praise and so naturally that happens i think the the thing with humility is you have to make sure that that praise doesn't become poison. And so um, I felt like our kids have done a good job up to this point. Okay. Um, we're to the point now with your program where anything less than a national championship might seem inadequate. Uh, yeah. You know, when you're when you're top ranked and uh, beating all comers, is, um, is, is that the mindset of this group? Um, not really. I think the, that's what they want, but I think at the end of the day, your objective is to continue to improve and continue to get better. And, and, you know, the the results are going to take care of themselves regardless of what, you know, sometimes the results just don't always work out the way they're supposed to. But as long as you control what you can control, I, I think that, um, you know, hopefully this group will like the results that they get. Hey, it's Blair. Hey, we have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners. Unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Stars award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns we have to offer. And it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. For your convenience, your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. A lot of subscription services won't tell you that. They'll just sneak it on there. We just told you. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. We're back. Now let's hear from Isaiah Simmons and Taran Matthew. You'll hear Simmons first. He spoke at the NFL Combine last week. Then you'll hear Taran Matthew. There's a lot of background noise, but I think you'll make out the questions from ESPN's Adam Teicher and then Matthew's answers. So, like, personally, I I like model my game after a couple people. Like, if I have to go look at film with somebody to get something, it would be, like, Von Miller just for pass rush, Jalen Ramsey for man techniques, and um, Tyra Matthew just because he plays around everywhere as well. So I take bits and pieces from all of them to kind of throw into my game. You know, trying to emulate, you know, my playing style, uh, you know, I think it just speaks volumes to, you know, really, you know, I think the people that's, been, that's, that's around me, you know, um, I've been able to really, you know, just believe in myself and continue, you know, going forward. And I think, you know, I think guys appreciate that, you know, more than anything. But that's something new, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just because you're a Super Bowl champ now, or what? what what's, what's that all about? <laughs> no, I think, no, I think, I think if you if you ask a lot of people, um, you probably got a lot of guys have raised their hand. Um, you know, when it comes to you know whether or not they look up to me. Um, you know, again, man, um, you know, I'm in such a great position. Um, to you know, to be a role model not only for for the youth but for but for my peers as well. Yeah. So, but you really, have you ever gotten that much publicly at least? Okay, hey, I want to play like that not, guy. Not, not, not publicly. You know, obviously, you know, every team I played on, you know, everybody wants to you know try to you know act like me or emulate my attitude or energy level. But um, you know, it's a good feeling to you know have guys that you know are, are far younger than me, you know, watch me and really study. Me. So now that you got that title, is it going to be difficult for you to keep that fire? No, nah, I don't think so. Um, you, know, um, you know, I try not to get caught up in that. You know, um, you know I feel like I'm on a, a, a bigger mission. You know, um, it's not necessarily you know by myself. Um, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in, I'm inspiring a lot of people, and um, I think football is you know really small. You know, I think it's obviously a, a, a platform for me, but I think a lot of people look up to me just be, just. Because you know the adversity I've you know been able to overcome, and so um, 
you know, I always tend to, you know, reflect on the things I've been through because it kind of keeps me grounded and, you know, keeps me motivated. Simple conversation, nothing too crazy. When do you start getting ready for next season? That's right already. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been thinking about it, you know, really the last month or so. And, um, you know, it's such a great feeling to, to really accomplish, you know, certain goals you set out to accomplish. And, um, you know, I think my mindset is to kind of reset and, and, and try to do it again. Um, you know, I think we got such a, a really a good team and um, a really good opportunity. Not every team has the opportunity we have. And so uh, I think it'll be important for us to kind of reset and, you know, just get back to work. So what are you up to between now and the start of uh, yeah, I'm, you know, just you know, raising my family, man. Um, you know, uh, stand out of the way. Uh, baby's doing great. Um, you know, I got my wedding coming up in April. So, uh, I'm excited about that. And, and then it'll be back to work for me. Well, when, you, uh, when you think back to that your, early in your career, you were uh, that, that jump from your first year to second year. Is that when guys make their biggest, tend to make their biggest? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I'd probably say really the, 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 the second second to the third year. Um, guys really tend to come into their own. Um, um, but I think the second year is you can see who's really committed and not. Uh, you know, guys have a little bit more money in their pocket. Um, you know, they don't have to necessarily listen to uh, authority. You know, they're not necessarily a rookie anymore. And so I think it's a lot of different dynamics that, that, that kind of go into it. Um, I think that's why it's important to kind of, you know, make sure you, you surround yourself around good people. Uh, people that's going to, you know, really teach you how to be a professional um, and more so just teach you how to prolong, prolong your career. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, that deal that deal we were talking about at the Combine really, really struck me. I mean, was it that way for you? I mean, were you like, wow, this is uh, this is something new. This is... Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's humbling, man, you know, um, to... Because I'm not perfect and, you know, um, you know, I'm not the prototypical athlete and, you know, I'm, I'm not the fastest, I'm not the biggest, I'm not strongest. Um, I won't even grade well, right? Like, if you have a combine a day, um... The PFF, so, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think what, but I think what a lot of those guys respect um, is, you know, I think I play for much more than, than myself. Um, I think every, every team I've been on, um, I think people have been able to see that, you know, uh, I, I play for the guy next to me more so than myself. And I think a lot of young guys, you know, I think they like that. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yep. That'll do it for today. Thanks to our producers, Savannah Smith, Derek Donovan, Randy Mason, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, and Chris Fickett. We'll be back on Thursday. Pretty sure the topic will be Kansas basketball, with the Jayhawks having an opportunity tonight to clinch the Big 12 championship, or at least a share of it. Until then, thanks for listening to Sports KC, where we talk sports in Kansas City every day.